<laughs> so welcome back to another episode of Making Waves Season 2. Um, today we're joined by people who are not new to Making Waves, um, the former hosts of Making Waves, Sophie, Erica, and Audrey, and then Hello. guest on the show, Abby. <laughs> Yeah, so today for our episode, we're just going to be catching up with um, everyone, seeing like what they've been doing, how they've been, especially during this quarantine. Where to start? <laughs> I know, for real. Like, what week is this? Like, week six, day, whatever of quarantine? Like, I don't even know what day it is anymore. All the days blend in with one another, honestly. They're all just one big day that never ends, so. Can you just sleep? <laughs> take naps in between. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> it's been like two months, I think. Or at least yeah, for me. started in March, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, March. early March. Mm -hmm. I think early March? Oh. Or sometime in March. See, we don't even know when it started. We don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I can start with sort of like what I've been up to these past two months. So, uh, for the most part, I've been living in like that Hillsboro Beaverton area. I've been working at um, a pharmaceutical company up there. So it's actually been really interesting, like since the outbreak, because uh, the company, they're actually ones who are like making, continuing to work and continuing to produce a medication that's actually sort of like treating some of this too. So mm -hmm. it's been kind of interesting um, the past few months to like see that development and see how like, there's new um, advances with like FDA approving like a drug just for this pandemic use or people working on site, um, even though the rest of them are having like that stay at home order. So like seeing essential workers on site um, and all that, that dynamic's really interesting. And also seeing how a company is a large company or like a global company is taking care of their workers through that, I think that's been really interesting. So apart from that, um, just working most of the weekdays, um, weekends, taking time to relax, um, catch up with some friends via like video calling. I've been taking a language class and like learning some of like the Khmer language to get back in touch with my heritage. Nice. <laughs> um, wow, yes. Yeah, I've been taking that class for like the past like I think like 12-ish weeks and so I just finished that today this morning. That's super cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then getting ready to start um, my master's program in about a month. So, wow. Yeah, Yay, so that's exciting. I'll be moving back <laughs> to Salem in like a couple weeks and so Dang. exciting things to come. Girl's been on the grind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gonna get that degree in polymer chemistry. <laughs> oh, I see. Wow. <laughs> Oh, so that smart. is <laughs> yeah like I don't know what that is but... <laughs> what about you Erica oh I I'm st well okay <laughs> so um I'm working at um in a product development I'm a product developer basically junior product developer Developer, so I'm working for a grocer, like a grocery store mm -hmm. company. Um, so I've everybody's been working from home since mid March, but I'm still going into the office because my role in particular requires me to go in. So I've just been working in the office mm -hmm. <laughs> every day. Oh wow! Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it, it was kind of difficult to get used to just because. Some of us were working from home and some of us weren't, but I'm so grateful that I get to work. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been an interesting experience, but I'm kind of getting used to it now. Um, but it's just kind of like figuring out when everyone's gonna like start to come back and how we're gonna do that. And we're wearing masks in the office where, you know, we have hand sanitizer everywhere. Um, so we're trying to be really cautious, but um, that's that's like pretty much what I've been doing just because like on the weekends like you can't really go anywhere so on the weekdays I'm just working <laughs> um, going to places only if I have to so but yeah that's that's what I've been doing what about you Audrey um let's see oh my gosh throwing it back to like 
graduation. So post graduation for like three months, I was grinding and like applying the jobs. I don't know if y'all like post graduation had some like mm-hmm. pauses in that, but oh, shout sure. out to Abby for recommending my current role, <laughs> uh, my current job, because we work for the same um, organization. But I work downtown, downtown Portland, and I've actually been working since like mid September. And then I was able to work from home, I think at least two weeks before shutdown. And so I was really grateful for that. Um, just honestly, we're in like full recruitment season right now. And like, things are getting pretty wild, like pretty hectic. Mm-hmm. My a- API Heritage Month is like, so booked. And next week, we're just gearing up for um, our last IST, our in-service training. So I've been um, like helping our staff and other um, like program leaders, or program leaders. So we come up with like materials and content um, and stuff like that. So, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Abby? Um, I don't know. I feel like even though we're all like working from home and stuff, like I'm working remotely and things, I feel like I'm still really busy. Um, and in fact, I feel like the remote work has um been even more challenging than being able to go into the office and get things done just because it's a lot more difficult to coordinate with folks um being at home I also have responsibilities with my family like helping caretake for my grandparents um supporting my little sister since she's having to deal with online classes and doesn't really know how to do that on her own my parents are essential workers so they still got to go to work and my brother's still taking classes like so it's still been wild um yeah homegirl hasn't been getting a lot of sleep lately but um you know I'm doing what I can to like take care of myself uh when I can so that's like watching I don't know catching up on my favorite shows and anime and um not playing Animal Crossing unfortunately because the switch is sold out everywhere and or um, overpriced or overpriced Mm -hmm. yes to be fair I couldn't even afford it anyway even if I wanted (laughs) to get it (laughs) um and uh shoot I was gonna say something else oh um I mean, I've been doing a lot more art now, um, which is like a big hobby of mine that I wasn't really able to focus on in college just because there was never time. Uh, But now I do have a little bit more time to spend on my writing, uh, to spend on my art. And so that's been kind of like a way for me to heal. And um, yeah, I don't know. These times are like wild, wild times, wild, uncertain I feel like everyone's been saying that like these are uncertain times you know like on car commercials they're like these are wild times but like please buy a Honda and I'm like (laughs) okay um (laughs) but I know that we're all trying we're just trying and we're doing our best and I think that that is awesome um because yeah it's just a struggle everyone's still busy Mm -hmm. I'm still busy Mm -hmm. um how are you doing, John? I'm doing <laughs> well. Just, I think I can speak for both Diana and Andrea too. It's like, it's been an interesting ride doing everything school online, you know? <laughs> but well, yeah, how's that going? What was that? How's that going? Just doing school online mm-hmm. and... It is. <laughs> You're like, yeah. <laughs> Shaking your head. Like, to be honest, I think, like, you would think it would be so much easier because you can schedule, like, the classes, like, whenever you want. Some are even recorded and and stuff, so you can build build college, I guess, a little bit more to your schedule. But for some reason, it's just much harder. Like, you spend more time, like, there's less time in the day, and it... I think even like mental health becomes a bigger issue in, like, these, like, quarantine times also. So, I don't know, it's just been, like like bang bang different things coming popping up and um focusing more on time management at least within the university setting so yeah (laughs) um i don't know is there anything else (laughs) diana andrea 
at least for quarantine for you guys? Yeah, like as a graduating senior, I imagined like spring term and graduation going way differently. So I was just wondering how you guys feel like about like post-grad, like how did you guys like imagine post-grad and how has quarantine affected that? Mm. Well, I mean, I definitely didn't imagine it to be like this. (laughs) (laughs) I, I, I've heard that some people saying, you know, like finding a job is a little difficult but it was pretty difficult difficult. (laughs) oh yeah Yeah. but I I well okay after I graduated I think we graduated in June I think like a little bit after that I did an internship through the Eli program the emerging leaders internship program um and that lasted about three months um and I didn't stay with a company that I interned for but, um, you know, I, I had some opportunities to, you know, network with some people and try to get my foot in the door. And networking's hard. Like, I hate networking. <laughs> I'm really bad at it. I'm very awkward. But I tried my best to just, like, get to know people. And eventually, um, I traveled for a little bit after my internship for about a month. I was out of the country. And then by the time I came back I think it was around like September like fall time when school was starting for everybody else um and for about four months I was looking for a job because I didn't start working at where I'm working right now till January um I interviewed like during December and the, the only reason I got that opportunity was because my old professor recommended me um and she told me about an opportunity which was awesome um and it was something that I was really interested in um and so I I took that opportunity but I feel like finding a job on your own just by applying and looking at job postings online it kind of takes takes a lot of time and it takes a while to hear back and it's kind of difficult so um I partly did consider working like part-time, maybe in retail, just to keep myself busy and not to just, you know, be at home so that I have something to present, you know, when I'm interviewing for like a full-time job and stuff. Um, But during that period of time when I was job searching, it really kind of, you know, took a toll on me like emotionally and like mentally. It was kind of, it was kind of difficult just to you know, because you don't know what's going to happen. And if you just keep hearing, you know, if you just keep getting rejections back, it's really hard to deal with. And you don't know when you're going to hear that acceptance letter. So um, I don't know, it was kind of a difficult time for me, it kind of stressed me out. <laughs> Do you have any tips for networking? Because I'm also shy and awkward. And maybe a lot of people out there feel that same way. Yeah, I, I feel like well, you're a senior, so I feel like my tip is kind of, <laughs> it's kind of too hard, but I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a good tip. It's just to, I think you've already kind of done this where just kind of make, build relationships while you're still in school, mm-hmm. um, get to know your professors. It doesn't, I feel like the thing that really um, pressured me was I thought I had to, you know, meet with a lot of people, get to know a bunch of people, go to career events or like networking events and just Mm -hmm. meet everybody that I can but I think it's I think quality is you know better than quantity to where um, build meaningful relationships rather than a lot of you know different kinds of relationships so I think that's a little easier to handle um than just trying to like you know check off every box and trying to like meet anybody that you can and like everybody that you can so that's something I would say, and I think, you know, working at the APCC, that's really helpful because, you know, you get to meet a lot of people, um, you get to, you know, build all these amazing relationships with a lot of different people, and, you know, a lot of opportunities can open up with that, but um, I don't know if anyone else has anything else, but that's something I can think of off the top of my head, but, you know. No, I'm definitely in, like, a huge agreement with a lot of that. I also Mm -hmm. faced a lot of struggle, like, going out of 
um, undergrad, I think that was something where a lot of people, especially in kind of like an engineering major and something had like that conception where it's like, okay, you want to have a job lined up. You just want to go straight and start working. And, but then it's been a huge struggle for a lot of people who I talk to. Um, I think I even know a few, uh, people from my year where they still have been having trouble finding like that first job. Maybe it, because it's like not like ideal what they want or, it's just um, they're looking for something in particular. But what I've learned through also like networking and getting in contact with people is just sometimes you just need to like take that first risk of that first job might not be like what you want, but you'll be able to like learn from it and gain skills that you can apply to a future job. Mm -hmm. um, what I did at the beginning was I, so I didn't start working until I think October in my job so at that time before I actually went back and I was like waitressing a bit again um to just like earn some money while back at home and also applying to jobs and then for me LinkedIn was a huge thing I started to get really more like involved with that and I made a lot of connections through that some people who worked at like companies I was interested in, and I did connect with them and they were super nice I found that the people that like you'll find a lot of people who want to give back to the students. And I know a lot of people sometimes go and connect with people just for the intent of finding a job. But if you go in with the intent of just wanting to learn from them and gain like some skills or like recommendations of what their experiences were like, that's also pretty valuable. So I felt like I gained a lot. And also when you have interviews with people, those relations have been really good too, even if you don't get the job. So I actually applied for an internship um, my senior year at the company I'm currently working at. And although I didn't get the internship because they're saying um, you should be looking for a full-time job rather than just a temporary one, um, one of the engineers there actually became like a really close like mentor to me and he kept me in contact with people and helped me at my current role now. So I was able to like come back to the company and continue to use him as a mentor when like making decisions about should I like move into a different department? Should I go back to grad school? Just keeping those ties and then also continuing to learn from other people in the industry via LinkedIn. I connected with um, some director of wastewater at another company in Beaverton who has been super helpful and he's um, lately been giving me like resume feedback and ways that I can connect with other people at his company or past companies that he worked at um, and really sort of just like helping provide that support that isn't always oh here's a job but here's a ways that you can build yourself to succeed later on in like the job field when you choose to transition work. Mm -hmm. um, no, that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was awesome, Sophie. I think like, yeah, my gosh, after I graduated, I feel like all I did for three months straight was sleep, <laughs> eat, shower, <laughs> apply for like at least three to five jobs. Mm -hmm. And like the first thing I would do in the morning is check my LinkedIn. Not my text, mm -hmm. not my emails. Oh. Well, my emails too, but LinkedIn was like, the thing for like three months and then I totally agree in the sense that like the connections you make in college are so important because like again mm -hmm. shout out to Abby she like <laughs> hooked me up with two jobs um like so far so the second one being my current job um but like I did not like adulting is hard y'all like to be financially independent that's just hard oh sorry <laughs> but, but um like in jan or in december i signed my first lease like apartment lease in downtown portland so on 23rd yes you look but then, i moved in early january and then the pandemic happened and so now your girl is paying for an empty space so that's not chill but i'm i'm quarantined at keys so uh, yeah, I'm just trying to like, I've accepted that that is my reality right now. And like, 
I could have never, I'm not that certain, I couldn't see into the future that this was going to happen. So I'm trying to not regret my decision of moving into a new apartment in 2020. I thought 2020 was going to be my year, but that's okay because I feel like it's not anyone's year. So, <laughs> but that is how post grad is going for me. <laughs> um, if I could add something too, uh, I know folks have um, shared a lot about like networking tips and the struggles of finding a job that comes with post grad. But I, I also think another another big thing, at least for me, um, since finishing up my undergrad at OSU was just this feeling of isolation and um, distance, even before all of this social distancing stuff. Look at me waving my phone around. Like, <laughs> uh, but uh, even before all of the social distancing thing, things that have come out because of the pandemic, um, I just felt like once I got tossed into the this real world, right? Um, this adulting life after college, I just lost a lot of connection with, with people, with friends, um, with like, with partners. Um, because then you, once you get a job and you start working and you, you just start to see people less, you see people less, um, it becomes more difficult, more challenging to make plans with your friends uh, because now everybody is busy. And for someone like me who, um, is an extrovert, kind of like a social butterfly. I get my energy from other people. Not being able to be with my people um, was really sad. And um, it, it's almost like this post-grad depression. I mean, I don't want to say that because like, that's, it's like really extreme, but um, you know, there's just something about going from four to five years spending all your time with some close friends, everybody in close proximity to you, you know, like I could just walk 10 minutes and like show up at Audrey's apartment. Um, or we could like take a really quick, really, really quick drive, two minute drive downtown with some friends and grab some dinner. To go from all of that to suddenly kind of just being on your own and kind of being isolated and then not being able to spend that time that used to give you so much joy um, with other people, not being able to spend that time um, anymore. So it's a little bit sad. <laughs> um, and then feeling like this is it. Like this is what I had been waiting for my, my entire life. Um, this is what I paid thousands of dollars for. Um, to then, fast forward to now, even being more isolated and not being able to go anywhere, um, not even being able to be in the presence of the people that you care about. Um, so that part has been tough too. And I think that's a, another aspect of post-grad life that um, not a lot of folks maybe think about, you know, because um, like, yes, jobs, are important financial security job stability that is all very important um but then you know there's also a work-life balance too and then what happens when what happens when you don't have that um it'd be a struggle thank you so much for sharing that abby i feel like so many of us can relate to those feelings and sentiments right now so like i just wanted to ask how do y'all like balance knowing when to keep hustling and keep going during this difficult time versus when you feel like we we should like slow down or like what what have your um what have you guys been doing to kind of balance that? You know, it's it's kind of sad to say this, but I feel like just money. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to like now that you know school's not a priority anymore for me um I need to you know start being financially independent I need to go and live my own life I can't rely on my parents anymore so you know it's, I'm getting older so I feel like all these things and just the reality of you know being an adult is it like really hit me and I feel like I just need to just keep working. I need to be doing something that brings money in. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of a bad answer, but. So no, I think that's a real answer. Like, <laughs> that's just real, like that's just real, real life. 
Yeah, that's the real thing. <laughs> that, though, you know, it's like I hate that that's kind of the center of my life right now. Oh, yeah. But it's so mm-hmm. true. Like, especially with, you know, we can't really do much right now. So the only thing going on my, in my mm-hmm. life is working. And, you know, part of me post grad, like, I want to move out eventually. I, it was kind of a struggle moving back in with my parents, if I'm being honest. Um, especially, you know, for, for a good chunk of time, you know, we were like living out on our own. <laughs> <Because here. laughs> uh, but, you know, just like the, the shift was so dramatic. <laughs> Yeah. And I started, you know, I noticed that I was starting getting really frustrated with the people that I was living with and they're my family. And it's, I don't like that that was happening. And so I wanted to move out and wanted to, you know, be more independent. So it's really, my focus right now is just like building up to that and, you know, saving enough money to move out, finding jobs that, you know, can pay me more to, you know, do all that. And I feel like a lot of the times I'm like, this is my life now. Like, this is it. That's like my entire life is just going to be me working and trying to figure out how to make it work, you know? I think that was like totally relatable. Um, I, I'm at the moment feeling like I'm kind of in the same boat where when I first like got out, I was like, okay, I just need to get a job. Like it didn't matter which. So I'm in my current role and I was like working out my goal was initially to just like work up, get to like that position that I wanted to. But when the decision to go to grad school came and I was more definite set on that, now the idea was like, okay, I'm going to continue working as I can to not just pay the current rent that I have to pay because rent is a thing and that costs. But also I need to earn enough money to start to pay off that tuition and to be able to afford that grad school cost. And then afterward, I can worry about the rest of my life and like the affording like things down the road for other life events. Cause I think like, although you said that it sounded kind of negative to have like money at the center, but I feel like in the way that our lives are all like playing money is like that transitioning like period it's what helps like drive everything forward for you to like reach those goals that you want so it's not always like a bad thing it's just a harsh reality hear that bag <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it kind of is like a motivating factor look because mm-hmm. I've been trying to figure out you know more creative ways that I could like make money <laughs> no, no. just like how I you know build a career for myself that I'll enjoy and mm-hmm. you know gain skills that will help me do better and so I think it is kind of you know a positive thing too yeah I'm in that boat I'm just like hoping that these things that we do now will like lead to better and like mm-hmm. things that we can maybe like enjoy and have like more of an impact with I guess yeah just to transition to a little bit more happier brighter mood <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a little fun game that I prepared that we can all play on. Um, and it's called, I'm pretty sure you always know this game. It's called Gimme Gimme. Um, I'm just going to list uh, uh, a theme or a topic and then you have to bring one item from that room and then we're going to share about it. So, um, oh God, I'm not in yeah. my own apartment. Okay. <laughs> not in my own apartment either. That's okay. It's I a don't. challenge. <laughs> yeah, it's a challenge. Yeah, it's a challenge. We'll make, I'm like, what do I have we'll make around? It <laughs> Audrey, just take all of Key's stuff. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess. Okay, so first prompt. Give me, give me, or I guess share, share. Um, an item or a souvenir from a foreign country or a place that you've traveled to. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Yo, I literally thought of this game like last minute, like 10 minutes before the meeting. I was like scrolling, what can we play or like, 
Yeah, I don't know, but it's I'll a try to look up games potentially <clears throat> play, but I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like came back and then I was like, oh wait, no, I have a better item, and then I ran out. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody? Oh, Audrey's still gone. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably panicking right now. <laughs> no, I literally ran into like Jane's room and he was like, What are you doing? And I'm like, Looking for stuff. It's fine. <laughs> Just everything. And I'm like surprised because I'm in my own room, but I, I was having a hard time finding something. <laughs> Not too much stuff. I need to get rid of <laughs> I'm kind of glad I'm not in my own room because I was like moving things back home, so my room's like half empty. <laughs> <laughs> A few moments later. Cool, cool. All right, everybody got their item. Yes. Not my item. Someone's oh. item. <laughs> 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 I guess you can start first from at least my screen. Uh, so Sophie, you're first. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, so I have like my keys here, and on this one, there's like a little keychain. It's of a Tumi, which is like sort of like a like a god, like sacred symbol from like the Incas of Peru. There was a bottom part to it that actually said Peru on it, but I broke it off on accident when I hit my car. Um, <laughs> so it's a broken keychain, but yeah, from my travels to South America. <laughs> nice. Cool. Next is I have Abby. Okay, so this is a Funko Pop of um <laughs> of Ochako from the anime My Hero Academia. I am a big nerd and I love Ochako. And I actually bought this pop um, last November when I went to the Philippines because it was cheaper over there. <laughs> And I, and then I brought it back with me to the U.S. Um, I know I could have picked like anything, anything else from other travels that I've been to, uh, but I picked this one because on that trip when I went to the Philippines, it was the first time um, I got to travel with my partner, and he got to meet my entire extended family in the Philippines, and so um, yeah. So that was just like a fun memory. And he's the one who told me to get it because I kept going back and forth about this. And he was just like, okay, well, we're here and it's cheaper here. So just get it now. So I was like, okay. Um, yeah. And she had to cross the world to get here. Okay. <laughs> like we, we went through a 15 hour plane ride together. So um, she a tough girl. <laughs> That's my item. You're right or die. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Okay, next is Erica. Okay, so this isn't my actual item, but Abby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, wait, yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> the BTS item, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I got this when um, I was in Korea and I went to go watch the BTS movie and they had like cups with characters on them and it's like a little like figurine thing that you put on that's so cute oh my gosh <laughs> it's so cute okay, sorry this, this isn't my item but okay my actual <laughs> item <laughs> it's a little more sentimental but it's um a bracelet that my aunt in korea got me um and she like gifted it to me i don't know if you can Aww. Oh, nice. wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, um, I, <laughs> I chose this item because um, I feel like, well, my aunt, I don't really get to see a lot, but I do get to see her, you know, every like five years whenever we visit. Um, but she's someone that I got to hang out with a lot when I went to study abroad, and she took really good care of me. Um, and she always does a lot for us whenever we we visit so it's it's really special and I was really surprised that she she bought me something so <laughs> I was just like wow you care about me <laughs> but um it was really it was a really nice gift so. cool <laughs> all right next is Audrey 
Okay, so I was going to use Keith's item, but I remembered that I have an item of my own. So I have these, um, what do you call these, like tortoise, the tortoise <laughs> pattern sunglasses. I got these before it was like trending a year ago, but I got these on my like Japan slash South Korea, like senior trip. Uh, I think I was I was there for three weeks doing like a cultural like homestay program and so I think I got these in Japan yes Japan at Uniqlo they were five dollars <laughs> hey hey <laughs> nice <laughs> let your crown fall girl <laughs> all right next is Andrea okay I have this matryoshka doll russian nesting doll um that i got from beijing when i went um i have a lot more of these matryoshka dolls from i think from romania from new york and from somewhere else and then i had just like one that was gifted to me but um yeah i have a red one two orange ones and a blue one I was thinking of grabbing them all, but I, I can't <laughs> hold all of them. Um, but yeah, I just really like collecting matryoshka dolls um, because they're really cute. It's really cool to see how they like are all very different. Like I have a small one that's like this small and it's like this fat. And yeah, they're just really cute. And I, I don't have any like significant meaning to them, but yeah, I just like them. <laughs> Nice. All right, I'm planning to go to Russia to get one. <laughs> <laughs> the real, real stuff. <laughs> hey, okay. Dana. For me, I couldn't think fast enough, but um, these are pajama pants <laughs> that my parents bought for me when we went to Japan. When I mean, not Japan, sorry. Vietnam when I was about like nine or ten. It was a really cool trip, but I remember just being like so ornery the whole time because I was pretty young. So I feel like I didn't get to appreciate it enough because I was just being a brat the whole time. <laughs> so I really wish I could go back now that I'm older and would probably appreciate it way more. <clears throat> nice. <laughs> and my, my item, um, I ended up getting, it's not a snow globe, but it's more like a sand globe. <laughs> I have uh, one too. You have one too? Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, I got this in Palawan when I visited the Philippines. That's where mine is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know if these are actual sands from Palawan. I'm pretty sure they are, but um, I really enjoyed that trip because I think that was like my actual, the actual visit that I had to the Philippines where I got to actually experience and like learn more of the culture and the land and stuff too. So it was a really fun trip and um, this, were like, this is like one of the items that I brought back home. So yeah, cool. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for playing with us. Sorry if that was really dorky. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, thank you guys so much for um, watching this episode with us. Thank you again to Audrey, Sophie, and Abby for and Erica for joining us. Sorry, I was going around my screen and I was looking and I was like, did I get everyone? And I totally forgot the middle. <laughs> um, but we appreciate it a lot. Um, we are happy to hear um like your guys' goals and um dreams getting fulfilled and like moving on and like doing really great and big things with yourselves um but please continue to take care of yourselves everyone even people who are listening um and also make sure to check us out on youtube for our other projects that are out for behind the food so just make sure you check all those out um, and listen to us on Spotify and on YouTube. And I think you'll also see our episode on Facebook. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, Bye. You. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. <laughs>
Following the Willamette Valley Treaty of 1855, Kalapuya people were forcibly removed to reservations in Western Oregon. Today, living descendants of these people are a part of the Confederate tribes of Grand Ronde community of Oregon and the Confederate tribes of the Siletz Indians. The host of this podcast includes paid student employees from the Asian and Pacific Cultural Center. However, all views expressed in this podcast are not solely are solely of those of the speaker and do not necessarily represent the opinions of the Asian and Pacific Cultural Center or Oregon State University. This podcast was not subject to prior review or approval of professional staff.